mildly sorry, not sorry for the title. Mate, you wouldn't have clicked the video if I put a sensible title on there. It's not clickbait though, it's true. You just gotta watch all the way through. That includes you, John. John, I keep seeing you watching my videos, but yeah, no, you, John, yeah. Just, you keep watching my videos, but you don't subscribe. Do it, mate, buttons right down there. Autodesk Fusion for manufacturing, Autodesk Flow for media and entertainment, and Autodesk Forma for architecture, engineering, and construction. This, this is the future of Autodesk made Asterix, in my opinion. All of this is underpinned by the Autodesk platform services. What exactly is all of this, right? Well, mate, I have to make super, super clear at this point, almost everything I'm gonna say in this video is pretty much my own opinions mixed in with some stuff that I know, but also served up with a hearty dose of much speculation. Because frankly, at this point, mate, we haven't been given much information to go off, but when you read between the lines, you can draw some fairly educated conclusions here because based on what's been happening already and what we've seen at the keynote at Autodesk University 2022. So all of this was introducing two new dynamics for Autodesk. Well, one new dynamic, another kind of renamed thing, but they're both linked. But anyway, this, in my opinion, is the future trajectory for Autodesk. These three things here are the eggs and they're putting them all into this comfy like basket. Uh, and the basket, mate, is what they call Autodesk platform services. It was formerly known as Autodesk Forge. Yeah, that's, yeah, the, another another product rename. But in their defense, this one actually makes perfect sense because that's exactly what this is. It's a platform for the development, hosting, and delivery of services. It, it's good when things make sense, mate. It's a good thing. Anyway, if you were never familiar with Autodesk Forge before it was rebranded to APS, Autodesk Platform Services, it's essentially a collection of APIs, which are application programming interfaces. So an API, is something that a developer or a programmer can use to develop software, which then communicates or interfaces with other software. That still sounds like a lot of high level waffle. The thing of Autodesk Inventor, right? For example, that's got an API. The API for Inventor allows access into the back end of it and gives a programmer a way to link their custom program to actual Inventor functions. Think about it this way, mate. If you need, if you need a custom program and at some point that program needs to save a file that's currently open, Realistically, your program can't move your mouse cursor to the save button and then click it. That's not. That's just not gonna happen. It's too unreliable, as is using keyboard shortcuts in a custom program, too unreliable. So the developer will actually activate the save command in the background using a specific line of code which Inventor provides, which is essentially an instruction. And when it's run, that sends the instruction to Inventor as part of the custom program. But in order for the custom program to even know that this specific instruction exists, you basically load in a set of libraries containing all of these instructions into your custom program, which is what they refer to as accessing the API. And the developer can then reference all the documentation for the API to understand exactly which instructions are available and what they all do. So with the Forge APIs, now known as Autodesk Platform Services, these are at least currently a set of instructions that allow developers to create custom programs that enable the likes of Revit, Inventor, AutoCAD, all to talk to Autodesk's cloud services. And one example of where this was used is a product called CADShare. So they use Forge to call on the Autodesk Cloud Viewer, that's the API part of Forge, which then also used the Model Derivative API. So what CADShare does, it takes an Inventor data set that your company will have modeled up, drives it into a lightweight translated file for optimized viewing in the Autodesk Cloud Viewer, it's then gonna extract the metadata out from your Inventor files and then uniquely present that and leverage it in a custom program. What does the custom program do? Well, CADShare is a way of allowing your clients to purchase spare parts for products that they've bought from you. So if your client needs a spare part for something they've bought, instead of having to scour through clunky paper catalogs or online endless lists of part numbers looking for what they need, they can access the Cloud Viewer on your website, for example, open up a web browser, view the 3D model of the thing that they've bought from you, click the part that they need. That's gonna then present the metadata to them to confirm, yes, that's the part you want. And then they can purchase that part from you with an add to cart style checkout service. I should be selling these plugs. Oh, you're welcome, Chris. Uh, so that's just one of many examples of how Forge was used in the real world, with Forge, of course, now being renamed to Autodesk Platform Services. But what about those three eggs, mate? Well, these are what Autodesk are referring to as their industry clouds, and they describe them as comprising of 
uh, a comprising of products that connect to processes and streamline workflows in that industry offering capabilities that span the full life cycle of the project might make look that's just the official line is high level sales part of that essentially someone can just slap against any of Autodesk's collections for example and it would make sense but the keynote to Autodesk University 2022 this is how it was pitched I believe that it is time for us to disrupt ourselves and pursue different ways of working. Now, at Autodesk, we have an opportunity to harness the cloud, to rethink the tools you rely on, and refocus them around a new paradigm. I believe a disruption of the technology we use to do our jobs, a positive disruption, is probably long overdue. So our industry clouds aren't simply incremental improvements to the software you already have. Our industry clouds are different. They will help you drive an entirely new way of working. They'll bring the capabilities you know and love from our current portfolio together in new and powerful ways that will ultimately transform the way you work. Now, I'm going to paraphrase quite a bit here because it was quite a long speech, but this is a new paradigm. It's a new way of working. These are not incremental updates to the software that you already use. They bring the capabilities from the current portfolio together in a new and powerful way. They're going to transform the way you work. You, not, not other people, not that guy over there who does something different and totally unreal. You, changes the way you work. Today's climate post-pandemic requires design tools that are fluid, not rigid. Now, the example used to showcase all of this was Fusion 360, and this is where you have to start reading between the lines. Because with Fusion 360, they say they've already unified design, simulation, CAM, electronics, and data management all into one package or a service in the cloud. Automating processes to eliminate guesswork. Fusion 360 will soon be able to automate part designs and tool paths and I'm sure we can do that already, but that's what was said, and automatically generate drawings and dimensions. But the cloud is going to take Fusion much further. It's going to take Fusion much further. They want all the data relevant to a product's development, how it's designed, manufactured, to be used and flow through your organization from top floor to shop floor. Now, this was the example given Fusion Industry Cloud. This wasn't just a talk on Fusion 360. This was the Fusion Industry Cloud, the entire cloud. And the reason it was so finely detailed on the keynote is because it's the furthest one forward and progressed in development at this point out of the three of them. Now, there was some very, very strong language used during the critical presentation. Today's climate requires tools that are fluid, not rigid. It's a lot to look into there. This will all be a new way of working, not incremental updates to the software you already use. Lines to read through there. It's a time for us to disrupt ourselves. So again, mate, everything I'm about to say here is 100% speculation based on that speech and likely not going to happen anytime soon, right? Don't panic. But what I read into this, what I was hearing was this is the beginning of the end for the majority of Autodesk's desktop applications. What was spoken of, what was described was a cloud-based ecosystem of connected services, modular components, connecting an entire organization's and their teams all together from design through to manufacturing all the way through to the likes of procurement with all of Autodesk's offerings hosted within that fusion industry cloud underpinned and ultimately probably built upon the Autodesk platform services APIs. So with all of that, where does the likes of Inventor fit into all of this? In my opinion, it doesn't. Inventor is a 23 year old old school application. It's just far too old. It's not suitable or worth the investment to transform or transfer into being a cloud-based service. Now, of course, Autodesk can't say that during the main keynote. It'll cause mayhem with the stock price and send customers spiraling. And before you write that comment, mate, stop. Before you write that comment about Fusion 360 being way behind Inventor in terms of functionality or performance, yes, it is. But I repeat, this is not happening today, tomorrow, potentially even in the next five to 10 years. Similarly, please try it. If you can, I know it's difficult, but suppress any concerns that you've got today about working in the cloud because today's thinking doesn't necessarily apply to the reality of tomorrow if your business is currently steadfast rejecting it's got a policy to reject anything cloud-based that's that's fine 
Again, that's today's thinking. All of this is for tomorrow with, I'm using, and I'm using tomorrow obviously as a metaphor for way ahead in the future. Like probably way beyond and past your time, my time possibly even, and obviously the current owners and stakeholders of the company that you work for. But mate, this is all inevitable. It's inevitable. We're rapidly heading towards a climate where customers are just demanding more automation, even more connected services and teams. And it's just not possible to do what people are expecting. Using local desktop-based applications, they're often restricted to and confined within a company's local or a wider area network. And there's challenges connecting those. And I'm not just talking here about Autodesk either, right? This is happening across every facet of not just not just business, but also life. I mean, look at Office 365 and all of its cloud connected workflows that you've got now. Adobe bringing in the Creative Cloud Suite with increased cloud collaboration. You've got ERP and CRM systems going entirely cloud based due to individual consumers now expecting cloud connected smart home functionality on almost everything that they buy. All of your Alexa routines or sending sat nav instructions to your car before a trip. All of these examples are the world transitioning to cloud hosted and driven connectivity. With the design software case, mate, it's either move on or be left behind because tomorrow's generation, they may very likely have a totally different mindset and a viewpoint on all of this than you or we do. And they may expect a lot more than what's on the table today. This is why, in my view, is why Autodesk is heading where it's going with the industry clouds. For the Fusion Cloud, again, just my opinion, I see Fusion 360 ultimately at some point maybe being rebranded and made the central core of the Fusion Industry Cloud. And talk about tools being fluid, not rigid. Fusion's fluid, Inventor's rigid. That's what Andrew said. He said, we need tools that are fluid, not rigid. Talk about automating part design. It's the future of Autodesk and the only future they've got, I think. And we're seeing that today with modular services in Fusion 360, its extensions, the likes of generative design for automating part design. Fusion 360 or whatever name the base service will end up getting when it hits the Fusion Industry Cloud. It's likely gonna be the core component to that with every and any design or engineering house being able to take that on and customize their extensions and services based on their unique requirements with the APS platform services offering up pretty much infinite ways to make the experience bespoke. We'll likely get a project management extension to replace the likes of Navisworks. We'll end up with a higher end data management solution to supersede Vault, which is always gonna be on premise and a much better design experience to ultimately, yep, supersede and make obsolete Autodesk Inventor. Again, I have to repeat, make it really clear, it's, it's not gonna happen anytime soon. Please don't dismiss all of this because Fusion 360 can't light a candle to Inventor today. I know it can't, but Autodesk have the facility and the resource to change that over the coming years. Same with Vault, mate. It's in, it seems just inconceivable that Vault would disappear anytime soon. We've got Upchain on the rise, but there's still no substitute for Vault right now. But that's right now. And as for concerns about hosting data in the cloud, again, mate, let your future colleagues, some who might still be an itch in their daddy's pants right now, let them decide on and judge that. Businesses change, attitudes change, policies change. Today through to tomorrow. So that was the Fusion Industry Cloud, mate. What about the others? Former and Flow. Well, these two are very likely, in my opinion, again, going to have the same methodology and ideology applied to them. However, as it stands, they're a little more, diff little more difficult to map out because aside from Formit, Autodesk don't currently have a public facing cloud based capable solution for both AEC or media and entertainment for that matter to rival the likes of Revit, 3ds Max, or Maya. What they do have though, the beginnings to an ecosystem. Autodesk Construction Cloud, for example, that contains multiple cloud-based BIM services that could easily inherit a key role in the former cloud, as would SpaceMaker and Tandem. Tandem being a digital twin management platform. All these acquisitions that Autodesk could be making of cloud services, there was a motive behind that. So with Flow and Media and Entertainment, I personally see this one as being one of the most difficult to pull off because M&E customers, media and entertainment guys, those guys often need the latest and greatest local hardware solutions for huge digital pipelines and processing. But again, mate, that's today's problem. Tomorrow, cloud data centers could offer up scalable graphics and digital processing way beyond anything you could possibly imagine putting together today locally through desktops and clusters. Shockgrid, that's likely gonna play a central role in the flow industry cloud, but how they offer solutions comparable to 3ds Max or Maya in the cloud, I think they're both way too old to port into a cloud solution. So I don't know at this point 
where they'd end up going with that. But why though? Why all? The, why are they doing all of this? Ultimately, what's the benefit to the end user at the end of all this? Well, again, mate, in my opinion today, just look at how everyone works. We're quite restricted when you think about it. You, 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 you kind of get used to it. You don't think about it, but we are quite restricted and somewhat held back by data formats, file types, file quantities, and storage. When you think about it, mate, we're still working on and with individual files like we were 30 odd years ago, right? AutoCAD's got its DWGs, Inventor's got its IPTs and its IEMs, Revit's got its RBT files, and they all often need to reference multiple other files in order to function, which can be difficult to track, difficult to manage, and crucially, quite difficult to share when you want to. So when you think about it, mate, it's quite archaic that someone using Inventor can't just send an asset over to Revit without needing a complicated translation plugin or some interoperability module just to send data across two main hero applications. Someone using Revit can't just hand over a file, just there you go, to an artist using 3D Studio Max without having to translate the file, which then results in textures being lost critical data about that asset being purged once it eventually makes it into 3D Studio Max. Reading between the lines here, Autodesk is striving towards a completely unified ecosystem of tools unrestricted by file type. Take a guess at which product currently has no native files. Yeah, Fusion 360, mate. It's got a data panel where you design to essentially assets. Sure, you can export files out as F3D files, but within Fusion, they're not files, they're assets. And I believe Autodesk are heading or striving towards having all of their three industry clouds being able to seamlessly interchange assets free from any conversions, any need to translate and any file type incompatibilities. An asset or a design created in a, the former cloud should be fully recognizable and usable with all native geometry, metadata, and visual fidelity recognized when you push that through the Fusion Cloud, for example. There's even talk at the moment of an asset system like this being close to fruition within 3D Studio Max in Maya, which when it comes, mate, keep a close eye on that because that's very likely the start of a very long journey at Autodesk currently on. So again, I have to repeat, all of this is my reading between the lines and pure speculation for the most part. I beg you, please do not reconsider your inventor subscription. Don't ask if you should reconsider your fault subscription. Don't hesitate before renewals or purchasing or even buying for the first time. Mate. None of this is going to happen, even if it does happen anytime soon. And when it does, if big if it does, obviously it's going to be a very long and gradual phase process with perfectly suitable migration paths and transitioning processes available from Autodesk. A switch like this is not just going to flick overnight from one thing to the other. But right now, in my opinion, lots of very smart people within Autodesk are currently working on how that switch is going to work and what it's going to look like. If you want me to be around here, mate, when it ultimately hits the wall and gets cabled in, mate, slap that like button, get subscribed. That includes you, John. Don't forget, mate. Got my eyes on you. <laughs> My name's Neil Cross. This is Tech3D. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Toodles.